for Senator, yeah. who is on the subcommittee, the select the Senate sub uh, Senate Select Subcommittee for Smart Grid Technology, and tell them that you want legislative action that enables people to opt out. They're already moving forward with this moratorium issue. They're talking specifically about that, but uh, we have to make noise. PG&E has more money than God. What we've got is our feet and our voices, and we need to use them to keep the light on the CPUC so that things don't get done in the back room. There's, as a political economist, we study a, uh, a, a phenomenon that is called regulatory capture. It is exactly what you think it is, however nice those people may be. Um, regulatory agencies become the captive of the industries they're intended to regulate, and the only way that they stay honest and actually do the people's work is if you make noise and threaten trouble. <laughs> so please do so, kind of like voting in Chicago, do it early and often. If there's enough noise and enough trouble, um, they'll do something. Thanks. Okay, I mean, let me just get a show of hands. Uh, do, does anybody here not understand that low level, as they're calling it, or high level, radio frequency radiation, non-ionizing radiation, do you need me to explain that this is dangerous? How many people already are convinced that these technologies are dangerous? Yeah. Okay, so a few of you are, are not there. <coughs> I'm convinced, but I don't understand it. Okay. There, um, first of all, one of the reasons that you don't understand it is because the way these toxic uh, substances, and this is a toxic, you know, the way these toxins are introduced into our environment, and, and we could, I mean, there's what is fluoride in the water, for God's sakes. Do you know how toxic fluoride is? I mean, do you really know it's a complete poison, right? So how does that happen? How do we end up with all these toxins? And now they're going to put more layers, more toxins. The way it happens is that there are these industry experts. We were going to go up against one of the worst ones uh, at a um, forum in uh, Sonoma County, and an hour before, I guess we're very formidable, an hour before the forum uh, started, they pulled the experts, which is amazing, because we were like, we geared up for this, really. But these are people who manipulate the data and then regurgitate the data in a way, and literally throw it up in a completely, uh, I mean, it's beyond a lack of integrity. I mean, it's just, these are people who are paid by the industry. and. Uh, there are industry groups. So, so when you hear any piece of information from the WHO or any of these large groups, they're getting their information from industry experts that are paid by the industry to destroy credible research. I mean, the woman that we were going to go up against destroyed all of the credibility of the research on leukemia and power lines for children. And everybody knows that, okay. So the, the thing that's, in, if, you know, we could go on for hours about why RF is dangerous. What, what um, Mary Beth said is important. Uh, we're used to a certain kind of electromagnetic radiation that the Earth gives out. And in fact, so are all the animals and bees and birds and all the rest of it. And this is a new layer of a different frequency. And it's delivered in a different way than we're normally used to. So it's, it's, it's like, you know, sh you can imagine, you take a trip to Santa Fe, you're suddenly in 8,000 feet, and you're nauseous and you're dizzy, but you can accommodate that after a while. But this is not something that we're going to genetically be able to catch up with. And when you look at the research, the problem is that, like everything else, we don't know exactly what the mechanisms are that causes DNA breaks, but we now know from repeated studies that it causes DNA breakage, which is the fast track to cancer. Do we know exactly what the mechanism is? Well, no, we don't, but we don't know any of the mechanisms for any of the cancers for sure. We don't. Nobody does, and nobody cares, because it's an industry. So. So there's DNA breakages, there's no amount of this radiation that's safe. Very low level radio frequency radiation or wireless radiation crosses, causes there to be, I should say, breaches in the blood-brain barrier. This is what protects your brain from toxins. So this radiation causes breaches. That means chemicals and toxins go right into your brain. 
So you have a concomitant reaction between sensitivity, electrosensitivity, and people with chemical sensitivities. So this is horrible for people with environmental sensitivities. So now we started with maybe 20% of the population, and it got to 30% electrosensitives. All of a sudden, all these people. Now, in this room that I went to with, with uh, the people from Sebastopol, there were 300 people in the room. Almost every single person in the room was electrosensitive. They got up and described exactly the same symptoms. The dizziness, the nausea, the, uh, f the face flushing, the skin reactions, the um, depression, uh, insomnia. I mean, it goes on. Incidentally, the sperm count and fertility rates are dropping like a rock. So here comes this new mesh network where houses are going to be antennas. They're talking about putting other things on this same system. Now, there is nothing in the bill that mandates the use of this technology that says anything about wireless. As, as, as Jeffrey said, Google and all these other companies like Sonic are coming out with, they're in a race to deliver fast broadband to you. And the fastest way is fiber optics. So what about your security? For, I mean, we've got the health effects. Do you need more health effects? I can, you know, I can just keep blood-brain barrier breaches, DNA break. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And that's low level. We're now talking about lots of it. We're talking about walls of meters on the, on the side of an apartment complex and a baby sleeping on the other side. What do you think this does to a developing baby's brain? Children have horrible reactions to wireless. I mean, if you've got a wireless router in your house, really, think again. We can't predict how much traffic is going to be on this network. Uh, the way that it's delivered is part of the reason people are reacting. It's, it's kind of pulse modulated. It's all kinds of, of things. And they're rolling this stuff out with no concern for people's privacy. So when I talk about privacy, what I'm saying is, who gets to know when you're at home, when you're not at home? Who gets to know what you're buying, what kinds of pieces of equipment you're using? You know, I mean, there's all kinds of privacy issues here, and nobody has said anything about how that's going to be protected. So is this going to be sold to other industries so that they can market to you? Is this going to be a situation where somebody can uh, stake out your house and figure out by, on the basis, uh, you know, using, using their computer to figure out when you're gone on vacation so that they can break into your house? Is that what's going to happen now? Does this mean now because this is wireless and there's no way to secure wireless, it's completely insecure. Um, um, uh, IT architects are completely freaked out about this system because it means that anybody can hack into the system. Anybody can drop the grid. There's no security protocols for this. And people who are really paying attention know this for certain. So what else does that mean? Does that mean that somebody can drive by with a cell phone, make a call on a cell phone, interrupt the signal somehow, and turn on your oven in the middle of the day? I mean, this is so stupid, and it's not necessary for it to be wireless. The mandate to upgrade the grid. Incidentally, we're upgrading the grid. Why are we upgrading the grid? Oh, because of energy efficiency, because there's climate change. Suddenly, every PG&E, everybody's very green. If you want a solar system, if you want an in-grid solar system, they can't give you a smart meter because they don't run backwards. So this doesn't work with solar. So one thing, one trick you can do is you put in a small in-grid solar system and you don't get a smart meter. But, but you know, excuse me? This doesn't <laughs> work with solar? What am I missing here? So what this means is you, as citizens, look, they can't force you to use a smart meter. We have to refuse them. And so far, they don't know what they're going to do. Can they turn off a rate payer? If you're paying your bills, can they turn your power off because you don't want a smart meter? I, they don't seem to be, they don't know if they're going to do that. People have called up and said, I'm not going to take it. And they go, well, OK, we'll estimate your bills. They're in trouble. Refuse the smart meter. The solution is to get torches and pitchforks and show up and scare the hell out of these guys. Look, these, these institutions exist not to serve you, but to maintain social stability so that the only way that you're going to get them to do anything is to threaten social stability. That's how it works. 
you don't have to accept this. The only way that, the, that, that this is going to stop is with people organizing and, and saying no. And it does work. Thank you.